Preserve me, Lord, for I take refuge in you. Preserve me, Lord, for I take refuge in you. Why will someone want to preserve anything in life? We preserve things because those things are useful to us. And perhaps we want to use those things in future. If the human person like the psalmist will cry to God, Preserve me, O Lord, for I take refuge in you. Why would God want to preserve us? Why would God spare our life if not for the fact that he wants to make good use of us? He needs something of us. If this is true that God needs something of us, it's out of his benevolence that he has spared us, preserved us. If I eat a piece of meat and I no longer need that meat again, I throw it away. If I still want to continue the meat, I preserve it in the refrigerator. If God does not need us again, he removes us. For us to wake up every day of our life. For us to have bread. For us to have sustenance. To be delivered from all iniquity. is still a sign that there is something God wants of us. It's an indication that his love is still there. Nobody keeps what he does not use. Nobody preserves that which is useless or harmful to him or her. God spares our life out of his love. Another name for love is charity. Charity is nothing other than the gift. The gift of the self to the other. The scriptures say, no greater love can a person have other than to lay down his life for the good of the other. You give, 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 give to the point of giving your own self. And this is what charity means. This is what love means. If God loves us so much and he gives us everything, he gives us the most important thing of life, which is life itself. Many slept, but not all woke up. Many woke up and went out. Not all who woke up had the ability to go out. Many went out and came back. Not all who went out came back. All came back. Not all who came back had the opportunity to express themselves. Some were lost in awe. Some came back beside themselves. We could not, they could not even recognize what had happened to them. They lost their mind. Some came back deformed. Some were brought back with ambulance. But here we are. We can move, we can stand, we can sing, we can sit. Is the blessing of God not upon us? Is anybody lacking the goodness of God or the favor of God? And that is why we mark out a day like this to say, we want to do our harvest. Harvest is nothing all but about thanksgiving. It's a gratitude to God. It's a thanksgiving for all the wonders God has wrought in our life. This is what harvest is all about. If you read Genesis chapter 4 verse 1, the Bible recorded the first harvest in the story of Cain and Abel. God blessed both of them. It's not that one was lacking the blessing of God. No, both were blessed. The different lied in their attitude towards thanksgiving. And this is what each of us win. Every time I compare my, myself to the other, I ask myself, am I lacking the blessing of God? Somebody looked at me and said, short man. I braced up, I looked at him, I said, tall man. Uh -huh. You are tall, I'm short. Is it not one one? You are blessed with height. I am blessed with shortness. Is it the same thing? You are not better than me. You cannot, I've never seen in life that somebody is richer than me and poorer than me at the same time. No. If you are richer than me, I'll be poorer than you. If you are fatter than me, I'll be thinner than you. You cannot beat me in both ways. No. Nobody is lacking anything in his own capability. God blesses every human being according to their capability and capacity. 
The small ragolis is filled as the big ragolis is filled. It's just attitude. You eat rice, I eat, I drink gari, it's the same carbohydrates we have taken in. The same end product. You are not aware? The end product of starch is what? Sugar. So the, whether you eat rice, I drink gari, it's the same. My body does not know whether it is gari I have taken. What the, my body will take is the sugar and process it. So it's attitude. You eat vegetable, I eat lettuce, it's the same thing. Attitude. Sometimes when we come to church, we find it difficult. Cain and Abel, one would thank God, give God from that which God has given. The other will be calculating. And that's where envy, jealousy will come. Because when you compare yourself with the other person, rather than thanking God for the wonder of your being, every human being happens to be the pride of God. God delights in his own. Each of us, we are precious in his sight. Never, never cease to give thanks for the wonder of your being. You may think things are not working well for you. I was reading something. A man said he was complaining that he had no shoes until he saw somebody that does not have leg. No matter your condition, somebody, you are still better than one person in life. You are not last. Even from beginning of creation, before you came out from your mother's womb, you were first. Because history teaches us that for a person to give birth, the man releases millions of spermatozoa. And it's only one sperm that will fertilize the egg. All the sperm released will be raising towards the egg. The fact that you are alive means out of one million of cells that were released, you came first. You are not a weakling. You don't lack the blessing of God. For you to come out first means you are great. That's why you say there's a drop of greatness in every human being. You may feel as if you are weak in life. You don't feel down. You see, he, he, I went to one school where they brought all the people that, that took first in all their schools. And they brought all of us together in one school. 60 of us. No matter how we write the exam, one person will still come out 60. Is it not true? The fact that you came out 60, is it a sign that you are dull? No. Because that person that came out last, if you take that person and put in government school, they will not see you with those them neat. So if you are struggling, it's because you are struggling in the midst of champions. Every human being in existence is a champion. So you are a champion in your own right. You don't need to kill yourself. Every human being is running the race. There are different time zones. Somebody can be born today. Before 20, he has made it. One can be born by 40, he's just arriving. Some will be dying by 40. It's different time zone. God blesses every human being accordingly. But then, what's the attitude? You see people, when they come to church, they give so little. Some don't even give at all. Some, their problem is just to stand up. Some, they need to hail them, hail them. Tell me more like Okoja, fling the hanky. Match me and pass. They hail, hail before they can do something. Some others don't even want to be known. There are some that are really, really trying. You need to ask yourself, what is your attitude towards giving God? Some, according to Futoshin, have turned themselves into primary planet upon which every other person must revolve. If they do not give or do not talk, no other person have spoken. Why have you turned yourself to God? No. You are only a creature of God. Benedict XVI says, every time the human person thinks he is God, he makes a caricature of himself because he can never be God. A person will only thrive well when he recognizes the wonder of his being and lives the full capability. Then he will bring out the best in him. The fish will do well when you put the fish inside water. The monkey will do well when he's on top of the tree. Human beings will do well when they have love in their hearts. Because every human being is a product of love. 
I tell people, stop. You are not a mistake in life. According to simple biology, when a man makes love with a woman, man plus woman is equal to a child. You see, Mama Obi, Mama Obi, you are pregnant. You say, ah, no mistake. I say, how do you hope to take care of? You say, now God, you make mistakes for God to take care of? No. Children are not mistakes. You are not in existence by chance. You are a product of God's love. You are a product of the love of, between a man and a woman. You are love personified. As such, your life must be in thanksgiving to God. In Mark chapter 10 verse 17, a story was told of a rich man who came to Jesus. And Jesus told the rich man, go and sell everything you have, then give to the poor. It's recorded in the word that this man went away sad. Those who cannot give go away sad, my dear friend. I have always read in the scripture that nobody comes to Jesus and goes away empty-handed. But you can come to Jesus and go away sad if you cannot let go. In our African culture, there is this way they used to trap monkeys. They will, they will, they will, they will, they will bring a, a coconut, create a shell inside a hole inside the coconut that hand can enter. They will now put orange inside it and tie it. The monkey will be observing. The monkey will see the coconut and go, look, look, look. He will dip his hand inside and he wants to remove the, the, the orange inside. His, his, the hand enters quite well, but then he's holding the orange. For him to bring the orange out, he needs, for his hand to come out, he needs to release the orange. The monkey will hold on to the orange and be struggling, trying to drag the orange out. Why he's struggling and dragging the orange out? The person will just come, throw basket on it and cover it. You see, the monkey will be saying a prayer. He said, dear Lord, please save me, but don't tell me to leave this orange. And that is how some of us, we pray. Dear Lord, bless me, but don't tell me to let go. We have heard these stories in different ways. A plane crashed. A man was falling. He begged. He has never gone to church. He begged, if God should save me, I am going to give my life and everything I own to God. As he was coming, he fell on a tree and he was hanging. As he was praying, if God saves me, the Iroko tree is far. A voice came. The voice of God came and said, leave the tree. The man looked, looked, looked and said, he said, please, is there any other person out there apart from God? Because he cannot let go. Many of us have eaten our own and eaten the one for the gods. In those days when we were small, when you buy something like small start or drink, you see our forefathers, they will pour small on the floor. They say, gods, take your own, the gods of our ancestors. I will give you your own. Today, you have eaten your own, eaten the one for the gods. No more rest for the wicked. But when God blesses us, he makes provision for the sacrifice. It is God that blessed Abraham. It is God that also provided the lamb for the sacrifice. When God blesses you, he makes provision for extra for charity. He makes provision extra for himself. But then the question is having the ability for us to let go. A man came to me one day when I was working in one parish. Every day, this man is in the church. Before five o'clock, I'll be hearing noise. I will come down. Is the janitor quarreling with this man? I, I, oh God, what is the problem? He said the janitor did not open the door on time. I say, oh God, this is still five o'clock for crying out loud. Mass is six thirty. He said, I want to have a, a quiet time with God. I said, for peace to reign. Oh God, open the door. Let him go. In the night, around 10, noise. I will come down. What is it again? Now? I said, two of you again. What is it? He said, Father, I'm telling you to go. I want to lock the door. He said, waiting. Are you God? I've not finished praying. He said, the one you have prayed is enough. Allow others. When you talk small, allow others to, to tell God. Are you the only person? They quarrel, quarrel. This thing was too much. And I asked him, oh God, what is the problem? He now sat down and narrated his story. How things, he was, in, he was moving well. Things were moving well for him. And all of a sudden, he went to import uh, drinks. 
He borrowed money from the bank and his friend because it was a big one from Italy. That fathers, I'm talking to you, the container never saw the light of the day. The container did not reach shore. They said it sank on the high sea. Father, I am owing the bank. I'm owing all my friends. They have seized my car, seized my property. Father, God has brought me from grace to grass. What have I done? And I looked at the man. I said, did you go to school? He said, yes. I said, give me your CV. As God will have it, I was supposed to see one man that works in oil company, Chevron. And I took the CV and I chipped him the words after gisting with the man. He said the guy has prospered. He helped him to get a job with, from his colleague in the bank. Because of the kind of um, certificate he had, he rose quickly. He became a bank manager. Meanwhile, when that man came to me to beg, he said if God should help him, he is going to come back in Thanksgiving and give God something with four leg. I was calculating something with four leg. It cannot be foul. <laughs> it can be goat or car. Abi, I started calculating something on four leg. I said, anyhow, shall we see it? But I was saying, hope this man will not play tricks on me. Or let him not come and bring cheer. <laughs> something on four legs. We now started. Do you know that I did not see this man again? And I left the parish. I think when I came to a kedja or thereabout, I was just preaching one day. I saw two people hitting themselves. Bang, bang, bang. And I told Dr. Sava to tell that couple to see me after mass. After mass. And I saw them. As we were talking, initially I did not recognize them. And I said, oh God, why are people distracting me during this dinner? The woman said it is the husband. That he told the man, the man does not like coming to church. He told the man that he should listen that I'm preaching. That that thing I'm talking is, is exactly the same thing he's doing. I said, oh God, why? Now? He said he told the wife that he wanted to balance his account in, before coming to church. The woman was disturbing him. So when he sat down, he said, let him balance the account. I said, inside church. As he was talking, and I said, eh, hey, this face looks familiar. I was not looking, looking, looking. And I said, eh, hey, were you not the one I prayed? And this? he said, oh, Father, thank you very much. I've been looking for you everywhere. I lost your number. You see, God used you to bless me. It is that work now that I'm a bank manager. I just remember something on four legs. Kai! This man did not come back. He now told me, Father, I, I, I remember my promise. I will come and see you. I will still see you. I have not forgotten. The wife said I should not listen to him. That every time investment, investment. He has told him to go and pay what he owes God. He will continue. As God will have it. I don't know whether I will say as God will punish him. All those times, shares, everything dropped. When bank was having crisis. Because he was the bank manager, they now arrested him. Confiscated. Froze his account. Seized his property. The only God that saved the wife and the children, they will have seized those who and joined. Is because they were not properties. They seized everything and he went to Krikri. In maximum cell, he now sent the wife to come and meet me. To beg me that he wants to see me. When I now went, he was now in tears telling me that I should please. I should please. That he knows that God hears my prayer. I should please help him to beg God. That if God should release him from this place, that he's going to double the one he promised before. If you are God, will you even answer him? You eat your own and eat the one that belongs to God. Attitude of gratitude. How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? Psalm 116 will say, the priest will answer, I will take the cup of salvation and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Every priest in thanksgiving for what God has done for him owes it as a duty to celebrate mass. Whether you give the priest anything or not, he celebrates the mass. He can't go on strike because you have not given him anything. You self check. Since you have come to this place, has anybody given me anything here? But I'll still celebrate the mass. Intense giving to God. The sisters will now say, My vows to the Lord I will fulfill in the sight of all. And that's why you see the sisters, they work in the, they work in the school, they work in our hospital. They are fulfilling their vows in thanksgiving to God for the wonders of their being. The people of God will now say, I will make a sacrifice of thanksgiving and I will call upon the name of the Lord. And that's your part. 
making a thanksgiving, a sacrifice of thanksgiving and offering to God. One should not beg you. One should not force you. You should not give thanks to God in order to win the admiration of men. No! It should flow from the depth of your heart to say, thank you, Jesus, for the wonder of my being. If you read Psalm 112, God now says, anyone who fulfills his commandment, his descendant shall be great and powerful. Riches and wealth will be his. One fallacy we think is that when we hear riches and wealth will be yours, we think it is money, car that God will give us. No! When God says riches will be yours, we need to look at God himself. When we say God is rich, we say he is rich in mercy, he is rich in love, he is rich in compassion. You may not have money, you may not have car, but you can have peace of mind. You can be rich in peace of mind. You don't know what peace of mind is. When I went to Ajegule the other time, I was staying in a home and Papa B came out using a chewing stick. And people gathered. He asked, what happened? They say, our brother came. He said, which day? Ah, uh -uh. Which day means that he did not hear the noise. Though. He slept like a baby. When he's going out, they say, Papa Obi, you have not closed your door. They say, help me, Jama. He does not have stress. He's not worried whether anybody will steal anything. He goes about his business. He sleeps in peace. But do you know that some other persons can have money? You have serious money. You have to build house. You are not okay with your house. You cage yourself. You put bulletproof and everything. Iron bender and everything. You cage yourself inside. It's not even enough. You hire a security person. You give the person gun. You are not even sure. Because my rector came out one night around 10 o'clock to come and tell the mega that when the student that have gone outside without permission comes back, he should tell him that he should come and see him. As he got to the gate man, the gate man was already asleep. The security guy was asleep. He woke the man. He said, Oga, oh Oga, oh Oga, oh it is not 11 o'clock. You're already asleep. This man said, Father, it is God. Oh. My rector said, Oh, you mean I pay you for God to guide us? We are not sure. They have slept. By the time you even have security with God, you are not even sure. You, you go and buy a dog. You say you want bulldog. They should crossbreed it with uh, German shepherd. And crossbreed it with a French shepherd. All the old shepherd are joined together. Even at that, when you hear da 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 da, your heart will still skip two beats. Is it not what created the fight? That the husband and the wife came to me. The woman said she's not marrying again. She wants to apply for annulment. What was the problem? Ambrobar came and the man was telling the woman to go and open the door. The woman said, No, you are the man of the house. He says, Because you, I am the man of the house, I am commanding you to open the door. They were busy quarreling. The umbrella was eating the door. Before we say Jack, the man follow window. Bagam. Oh, Israel. As he followed window, the woman wanted to follow, but she was on the big side. Before she could climb, the umbrella caught her and beat, beat her for attempting to run. It was after the incident, the woman now came and said, Father, how can a man abandon the wife in that situation? I saw a guy, why did you do that? He said, no, I went to call back up. So how will I now judge the case? <laughs> how can I repay the Lord? You don't know what God has done in your life. Every day you sleep and you come back, you work, you go out. Do you know how many people, they think that even cars can save them? It's not true. It's the grace of God. Sheyu was saying the other day that a man bought bulletproof in traffic and number of us were raiding. The man said, open the door, let me run. The driver reminded him, oh guy, it is bulletproof. The man asked the driver, were you there? Did they test it in your front? It means he's not even sure if that thing can secure his life. Only God can secure our life. Because even if you are a president, you are army commander, we have heard in history that they have killed them with all their entourage of soldiers is god god never stop praising god and thanking god when noah blessed god with different animals god spared his life in genesis chapter 2 verse 1 when abraham used his only son in attempt to thank god god provided a lamb today god is asking you to give your isaac not your ishmael Give the best, not what you don't want. 
A man came to do Thanksgiving in church. And to my greatest surprise, he used the God that one eye was not good. It was after mass I was hearing that people were not prizing that goat in his house. It's only in church collection I've seen Biafra money that I don't know where they spend it. Anything you don't want, back to sender, you give it to God. We behave like these little children. You know, like when we're small, our parents will give us money. They will say, because we like sweet a lot. They will say, use this one to put for collection. Use this one to buy biscuits. We'll now be happy. We'll just be running, running, running. One will now fall. Enter inside one gutter. A very deep gutter. We'll try. We cannot pick it. We'll now say, God, it is your own that has fallen inside. This one is for biscuits. That's how our life is. The one that even treated me the most was when a man and a woman came, brought themselves to church. What was the quarrel? The woman was complaining that the husband is always doing Thanksgiving, but he knows what he's doing. Every time he's doing Thanksgiving, he will be thrilling the whole church. Meanwhile, the fowl that he has brought to church, there is this way this man has trained the fowl. Every time he brings the fowl to church, we will not see that fowl again in the compound. The fowl will walk back to the house. Don't do thanksgiving with tricks and calculation in your heart. Give God with the depths of your heart. And God will bless you rewardingly. I pray on a day like this. That God will never take his eyes away from us. And may the work of our hands never bring shame upon us. And every time we, the light of God sheds upon us. May we never be ungrateful. May we have the courage to always look at the mysteries of our brothers and sisters. And may we have the courage to participate in the love that binds all of us together. And I pray as we do this, may his love never depart from us through Christ our Lord. Let us rise, my dear friends, and let us profess our faith. I believe in one God.